This is the perfect setup for heart disease. So perimenopause is the time. I always say train for menopause, like you're training for the marathon. Mm -hmm. Like start right after you give birth to your babies and you'll be ready during that perimenopause. It's never too late though. And certainly during that time, it's important to really get these numbers checked and know what you need to do, how you need to eat for yourself. We call it nourishment, how to move for your health, how to get the sleep you need, how to manage your stress. Because once perimenopause hits, that's when things start getting really bad. And after 10 years of menopause, when most of that estrogen is gone, yeah, incidence of heart disease skyrockets. Welcome to the Good Life Coach Podcast. I am your host, Michelle Lamoureux. The intention of this show is to awaken you to your fullest potential. Join me each week for inspiring interviews to elevate an area of your life, as well as interviews with women entrepreneurs who are creating success on their own terms. Each episode provides actionable tips to guide you to design a life you love. Hey friends, it's Michelle Lamoureux and welcome back to the Good Life Coach podcast. Today, we are talking about heart health with an amazing doctor and cardiologist, Dr. Suzanne Steinbob. I'm so honored you are here today. Um, not only is she a leading cardiologist, but she's also an entrepreneur, which kind of fills two boxes of what we cover on the podcast today. So we're not only going to learn about heart health, we're going to learn about this amazing platform she's building to empower women as broadly as she can. Dr. Steinbaum is a leader in preventative cardiology and is in private practice in New York. So for over 20 years, she's been a champion of women's preventative cardiology at New York's finest hospitals, including Mount Sinai Heart, Northwell Lenox Hill, and Beth Israel. And she is also the CEO and founder of Heart Tech Health, which is what's creating this technology-based prevention model through Adesso, and is the author of Heart Book, Every Woman's Guide to a Heart healthy life. She's been a national spokesperson for Go Red through the American Heart Association for 18 years. What an honor to have you on today. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Um, this is Heart Month and I start wearing red February 1st uh, and, and it goes right to the <laughs> right to the end of February. And um, I told you I'm wearing red today yes. in honor of meeting with you, but please go ahead. <laughs> we, uh, the first Friday of February is really the signature day for all women to have that awareness that heart disease is her number one killer. And this year I'm hoping myself and Adesso can really help change that as those statistics. Yes. Well, thank you for being on a mission to do that. I'm just so grateful to you because why is it that we don't know that Dr. Stein? I'm like, that's what concerns me. And that's why I'm so grateful that you're here today. You're saying heart disease is the number one killer of women, but we hear about breast cancer and that's what we worry about. But nobody's talking to us, as far as I know, about our heart health. What's going on? I will tell you. So let me just start with the stats a little bit. Please. So one in three women will die of heart disease. One in 33 will die of breast cancer, but more women die of heart disease. Are you ready for this? Yes. Than all cancers combined. Oh, so gosh. what's the deal? I'm going to break it down for you because it's really fascinating. And it's really interesting when you look at it in the context of our society a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So all the research was really done on men's hearts. And when you look at the timeline in 1984, more women die started dying of heart disease than all cancers combined. Wow. Why? All the research was done on men. Now, here's what gets fascinating. It wasn't until 1990 that the NIH developed an office for women's health. So none of the research really started until the 90s. I mean, that's like yesterday in, in science land yes. because it takes about 20 years for the research to hit clinical practice. Wow. So we're not even there yet. So that's the first problem. Okay. The second problem has to do with the doctors. Part of that is that it just wasn't part of the education. And so when I started, and this was like 20 years ago, being in the emergency room, 
I always talk about this like aha moment I had with a woman being wheeled in sick, nauseous, really uncomfortable and being put in the corner with the diagnosis of gastroenteritis or inflammation of the stomach and having a heart attack in the emergency room where I was a training doctor in front of the doctors that I respected and revered. And it was like, I need to do something about this. And when I brought it up to the chief of cardiology, I said, I want to do a fellowship and prevent in women and heart disease. And he said, there's no such thing. That was 20 years ago. I said, I want to do it in prevention. Guess what? There was no such thing. So I did one of the first preventive cardiology fellowships in this country and still know that more physicians underdiagnose do not treat the same way as men and women get delay in care. They don't get preventive strategies. They don't get the same treatment that men do. And in fact, more women die of heart disease in the hospital, even after they have a heart attack. So that's the doctor's story. And the last part of the story are the women. Now here's our problem. (laughs) The women weren't told about this. Yeah. But the most interesting thing is this one survey that was done about 2016. Group of women were surveyed and it was asked, how many of you know that heart disease is your number one health threat? And at that time, for whatever reason, it was over 90% of women knew. Oh. Then they were asked, how many women in this room believe that it's her personal threat? Guess what? 13%. It's every other woman's problem, but definitely not my problem. So there was a disconnect. Yeah. We'll all go get mammograms, but nobody's really getting their heart checked because it's everyone else's issue. And so part of the problem is that we have not gotten the education out there, but women haven't been on the mission to be empowered the same way we feel the, the passion about getting our mammograms. We need to be on a mission to get our hearts checked the same way, if not more. Wow. Okay. There's so much to unpack there. And thank you for sharing that. It's just making me think, so I've had a lot of doctors on and there's this consistent theme that I'm seeing where, oh, when I was in medical school or the way that medicine is practiced, we don't get that much training on menopause, on uh, heart health and all this stuff, or women present differently, but the doctors don't understand and still don't seem to, for whatever reason, um, pay as much attention. And this is a big problem. But I feel like physicians like yourself who are on a mission are changing the conversation, which is what makes me feel hopeful. Like you are going to change this conversation. You are going to save, who knows, somebody's life who's listening today. I have, uh, as I mentioned, I've been a spokesperson for Go Red for Women. It took me all over this country. And in writing a book and going on that book tour, speaking about this and being here with you today, I am fairly certain there's at least one person who's listening who's going to say, huh, maybe I should do something. And what I've learned is that when you tell a woman the truth, this yes. is this is women. They will do something about it. Yes. Men will ignore it. Women, yes. <laughs> women true. They get it when they get the truth. They're like, what? And they will do something. That's right. I'm going to say to those women who are listening, tell four friends who are not listening and have those friends tell four friends. Let's just start a mission, a movement, because it has to happen. Absolutely. Oh, I just got goosebumps and I, I love this. Okay. So you're going to help us understand more. So you just said one in three women are going to die of heart, heart disease. Um, and you also wrote I, some of the other stats that I saw on your website is that 80% of heart disease is preventable, yet 70% of women don't know they are already at risk that will be affected, right? So who are we? Sh- who should we be talking to? Is it our primary care doctor or should we be starting a relationship with a cardiologist? And what are those risk factors? Like help us understand to know if we're like in the danger zone and we're like completely unaware. So let's start with the basics. Okay. Let's start with the fact that really heart care needs to be the new self-care. We need to put this on our list of to-dos. I don't care if it's after like the food shopping before the dry cleaner, (laughs) I don't care. It just has to get on the list. Okay. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about the risk factors. 
mostly we know, most people know the major things like cholesterol and blood pressure and sugars, but we also need to know things like family history. Hmm. We also need to understand that adverse outcomes of pregnancy, like preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, Hmm. even elevated sugars or elevated blood pressures during pregnancy increases your risk of heart disease within five years. Wow. Women also need to understand miscarriages, premature birth, low birth weight babies, Mm -hmm. believe it or not, increases your risk of heart disease. Really? Yes. Now I'm going to explain to you a little bit why without getting scientific. Yes. Because I want to explain to you the next part of this. Okay. It all comes down to the arteries and the health of the arteries. And these arteries stay really healthy with a lot of estrogen. That's why as we go through menopause, things start getting dicey. As we lose that estrogen, the arteries start getting stiff. Mm. But those arteries are what keeps, the lining of the arteries keep arteries dilating and working so smoothly that in fact, plaque and heart disease doesn't develop unless those arteries get stiff. So blood pressure, cholesterol, sugars, it all makes the artery stiff. But here's what else makes it stiff. Yes. Anything that increases inflammation. Mm. Now, what increases inflammation? Stress. Life. (laughs) (laughs) Daily existence. You know, the stress. Yeah. The not sleeping. Yeah. I, I keep talking about... And women seem to understand this, those toxic relationships that somehow we get involved in that we can't get rid of the friend that drains us instead of supporting us. But all of these things that are part of our lives, it increases stress hormones. It increases inflammation. It makes those arteries stiff and all of a sudden it develops heart disease. So when are you at risk? A hundred percent. If you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high sugars, if you're not eating great, you're not exercising, you're overweight or obese. But also, if you're not taking care of yourself and managing the stress and those relationships and sleeping enough and things like that, we, we're hearing more and more about like the job stressors, hmm. not having stability in your job, food insecurity, you know, the hmm. geography, all of these things, they all matter. And make a difference when it comes to the development of heart disease. So to answer your next question, in my perfect world, a woman will walk into her primary care provider and be able to go through these risk factors with her. That's what ADESO is about. It's a communication tool to really identify women at risk and communicate with her primary care provider to say, what tests? How do I know? What do I do? About 60% of women are misdiagnosed at being at risk with the present risk calculators oh, in no. cardiology community. <laughs> but with even within the cardiolo- like with cardiologists themselves? Yes. Oh, goodness. So. Yes. I'm, I'm telling you that what we're talking about today. Yes. Family history, the pregnancy issues. Yes. Those aren't even part of our standard risk calculators in cardiology. Never heard that before. And Never. they need to be. Autoimmune diseases, things like lupus, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, things, rheumatoid arthritis, things that are more, uh, they're more prevalent in women. Mm. These increase your risk of heart disease because of the inflammatory part of it. Oh, wow. So I'm telling you that part of my mission is to change these statistics. It's to not, to allow women to go to the primary care provider, not to need to go to a cardiologist just to get the preventive strategies that she needs. Okay. And it can be so confusing because I've been to a cardiologist and then you leave and you're like, wait a second, is that a what? problem or not? Like I got a, what is it? A, an echo or the ultrasound of the heart. And she's like, your flap doesn't close. And I still don't know if that's a problem or not. I forget what it's called. Mitral valve. Yeah. You have mitral valve prolapse and you yes. have regurgitation across I your do. Flap. Yes. But I didn't even know until I got that. And part of it is, and I don't know, let, let me just ask you this because when is it, cause you mentioned um, the estrogen and menopause. I saw that my cholesterol 
went up like 30 points on the LDL within three months. Yeah. Now that I'm in perimenopause and it must be connected, is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. The menopause conversation is another thing. We never talked about it. In (laughs) fact, we don't even learn about it in medical school. And the students now don't even get classes on estrogen or hormone replacement. It's crazy, but clearly uh, there is much more conversation around menopause and what happens. But let me tell you about the heart side. Yes. They mentioned the lining of the arteries and arteries get stiff. So blood pressure goes up. But what you mentioned is that also cholesterol goes up. Mm -hmm. The bad cholesterol goes up, the LDL and the HDL, the good cholesterol goes down. This is the perfect setup for heart disease. So perimenopause is the time. I always say train for menopause, like you're training for the marathon. Mm -hmm. Like start right after you give birth to your babies and you'll be ready during that perimenopause. It's never too late though. And certainly during that time, is it's important to really get these numbers checked and know what you need to do, how you need to eat for yourself. We call it nourishment, how to move for your health, how to get the sleep you need, how to manage your stress. Because once perimenopause hits, that's when things start getting really bad. And after 10 years of menopause, when most of that estrogen is gone, yeah, Incidence of heart disease skyrockets. That's what I wanted to know. Is there a particular age where it starts getting, would those statistics really start kicking in? They that's really when it is? About 65 years old. And we're saying that's about 10 years after menopause. Okay, gosh. <laughs> I feel like women go through so much. Okay, I want to hear about Odessa, but let me just ask you just, um, you've talked about like the blood work, whatever. Is that part of Odessa? So it'll help us understand what to be asking our doctors? Yes, for- Because we actually check blood tests that are important to understand your risk. A genetic test called lipoprotein little a, LP little a. I just got that one. Good. Yeah. Because you know what it's called? A novel risk factor. Yes. This has been around for 20 plus years. We've known about it. It's been in clinical research for so long. But as I mentioned, it takes research a long time to hit clinical practice. And I'm so glad that you got that. But we make sure that we give the great list, the ultimate list to give to your primary care provider about what blood test to get and also what screening tests. And if you're actually at moderate risk of heart disease or high risk, getting a coronary artery calcium score, which is a CAT scan of the heart that looks for calcium in the arteries can be really important to understand your risk, especially if you have family history. Okay. You mentioned that when women present, let's be uh, just help us understand. So our symptoms are different than men. So when we're presenting with heart attack, if you're truly having a heart attack, you yeah. mentioned that woman showed up and she was nauseous. Like what, what, what's, what's happening? So we know what, you know, the Hollywood heart attack is the yes. clutching of the chest, blue right. in the face, sweating. Women are a bit more subtle than that. Although chest pain is often her first symptom. Yes. Shortness of breath is equally as prevalent as chest pain and other symptoms like jaw pain, back pain, nausea, vomiting, sweating, even flu-like symptoms Mm. could be signs of heart disease. Um, I, I used to give so many speeches and I would go through these symptoms and everyone in the audience would always look uncomfortable. It's like, oh my God, am I having a heart attack right now? I don't sleep and I'm <laughs> I'm nauseous. And like, I'm nauseous all the down. time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the, the truth is women's symptoms are oftentimes more subtle. And this is when I talk about exercise a little differently than maybe you're used to hearing. If you exercise every day, you can actually determine whether or not you're having physic any physical issues, because especially with your heart, if something's going on, you won't be able to do the normal exercise you're used to doing. Mm. So it's a really good barometer to understand what's going on with you physically. And so I always say, if you can't do your usual activities, then you really should start thinking about your heart. Okay. So I've heard um, blood pressure, knowing your BMI, uh, your cholesterol, like c- certain blood tests. Um, what about heart rate variability? Cause like I wear the aura and I'll get like a great score. Oh, you've got yours on too. I get the 90 
percent or whatever, 92 percent. But then it's like, take it easy today. Your heart rate va- va- variability is up. I mean, down, like low, yeah. as well as your resting heart rate. Like, don't don't exert yourself. And I'm, so I'm sleeping well, but yeah. my bo- my heart's not resting well. What's that I- about? I love heart rate variability. Uh, it's interesting. It has not been used in clinical practice regularly. Yes. It's very, very hard to test. And that's a whole nother thing. Yes. Doctors like to be able to test easily and know what to do with the results. And they don't often know what to do with the results the same way you don't know what to do with that result. And yes. so that's why it's often not, not checked. But heart rate variability is simply about your heartbeats. When you have heart rate variability, it actually means that your heart varies with inspiration and expiration. And that means your parasympathetic nervous system is in charge. Your your vagus nerve is, is doing its job, keeping you rested and calm, your blood pressure down and your heart rate down. When you don't have heart rate variability, it means your heart is pounding through and there's no variation. And that is triggered by the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight nervous system. So we want heart rate variability. We want that to be high and not low. So when yours is low, it means your parasymp- your sympathetic nervous system is in charge. Yeah. Why does that happen? Stress. What's going on? Did I do everything on my list? Okay, so you're sleeping, but what's happening throughout the day? So exercise. It yep. to me is like a medication because it actually triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. And so even when you're not exercising, it really forces that vagus nerve to be more in charge. The other thing that does it is meditation. Hmm. And meditation is one of the most powerful ways to increase your heart rate variability, breathing, calmness, stillness, mindfulness, all of those things are really to work on that parasympathetic nervous system and that heart rate variability. Okay. But I'm actually sleeping. Oh, I sleep. Yeah. My REM is great. <laughs> the, like all of it. Right? Yeah. I'll get a 92 and then a, like a flunking score on the HRV. <laughs> and I'm like, what's, what's this about? Well, let's talk about Adesso. So I have to just say thank you. So I think people don't realize to do the work that you do, you could just work in a hospital and you could help your patients, but you started your own practice and now you're, you're taking it to the next level. This is like, talk about stress. I mean, this is a huge undertaking, but clearly this is your mission in life. Like clearly, since like you said, you were in the ER as a student, seeing that woman, you're like, you, something lit within you and you've been on this for over 20 years. So tell us what Adesso is about and how, so the, cause this is for women, this is for women. Like, how are we, how, help, how, how, Help us understand how it's going to empower us. What's it about? I think um, COVID and quarantine was impactful for some of us in other, in some ways and, and so stressful in other ways, but I really think it made all of us pause and really think about where we wanted to be in life. Mm. And I've heard that from so many patients and so many women. Yes. And I looked at that time and said, 20 years ago, one in three women were dying of heart disease. It's 20 years later, and one in three women are dying of heart disease. So I've wrong. written a book. I've spoken all over this country. I've been in the hospital. Now, either I'm going to stay in the hospital and continue to be part of the problem, or I'm going to leave and create a solution. Mm. And one of the things that we've learned is when you live life with passion and with purpose, you actually live longer. So it's benefiting me as stressful as it is um, to actually do this. I do believe it will make an impact. And I do believe that at some point, all women, when they understand that they have been misdiagnosed and mistreated, the same way that women fought to get mammograms covered by insurance, they're going to fight to get the same cardiovascular health prevention that all men get and that all people of all walks of life should have. Yes. And that's basically what Adesso is based on. I'm so excited because I get to share with you that in a couple of weeks, um, we're launching the forward facing platform, which is called adesso.health. Okay. And on Instagram, it's my Adesso. And I just want to tell you what Adesso means. Um, it's the language of love and romance in the heart, Italian. 
and it means now in Italian. And I always say, if the time is not now, I don't know if it will ever be. Mm. So I want everyone to really think about what their now is. What is their purpose? Why do they want to stay healthy? What, what matters the most to them? And I love hearing the answers, whether it's the dream of, you know, I, I just want to snow ski with my grandchildren when I have a 16 year old, it feels very far away, but just to be healthy and vital or whatever it is for you, when you realize there is a purpose behind you taking care of yourself and you actually can take care of yourself, you don't need to get sick. The reality that we all are in charge of our own health 80% of the time, that is the one thing that should really impact our behavioral choices to know we can make a difference. So adeso.health is that forward-facing platform that really gives you information, really explains so much about how to prevent heart disease. But the coolest thing, I have all these wonderful experts who've come on to really talk about their part of our holistic well-being, whether it's how to cook or how to get the salary that we want in our careers or a promotion that we're looking for or how to move into a new career in life or how to meditate. I have all different kinds of people that really are focusing on so many different aspects of us as women holistically. And uh, it's kind of cool for me, if I can say, because I've interviewed so many of these people over the years and they've just come on board graciously to be a part of, again, a mission. And then the Adesso clinical journey and my Adesso risk stratification, that is all coming out within the next year. And when you join us on our journey, you'll hear more and more about how to get access to it. I love it because you're talking about all aspects of health. This isn't just check the boxes, right? This is a broad, it's your sense of purpose, your sense of meaning in your world, your your social connections, your job satisfaction, in addition to the clinical, the the blood work, your cholesterol numbers and all of that. Like that is so important because all of those factors, like you said, contribute to the inflammation. So we have to look at the whole picture, right? Is that the goal? Like, And when, you know, even you were saying, if you don't mind me going back to you, yeah. why is the HRV low? I don't you know. know. I don't and, know. And when, but then when you start thinking about it, like yeah. when you start self-evaluating, yeah. that's what part of this is. Yes. So you know, let's really take a good look at ourselves in the mirror and figure it out because this is what health is about. It's yes. not just the cholesterol. You know, it, it, I, I talk about this one patient that makes me giggle. She couldn't lose weight, could not lose weight. She would put her kids to bed and then she would start like doing laundry, cleaning up the house, like doing paperwork, answering emails. And we figured out like after nine o'clock, she was having like 1200 calories of snacking. <laughs> and I was like, just go to bed earlier. And like three months later, she lost 15 pounds. I'm like, you know, if you don't pay attention yes. to what you're doing, if you don't really understand how you're living your life, that's when we get caught in these ruts. Absolutely. We have to be looking at, take responsibility for our health. That's really what it comes down to. Cause we really just, we get such a limited time with our practitioners, even if they are fan- fantastic. So we have to take ownership is what I'm also hearing. Accountability and empowerment and yes. education. Know it. Those are my three things. You get educated, you get empowered and you're accountable and then you can do something. Okay. We're going to list everything, all the links and everything on the show notes page. And I'm going to have you say them one more time. But before that, I, is there anything I didn't ask you that you really just want to make sure the women walk away with today? Anything that you want to say? I, I, some depressing statistics, but there's a purpose behind this. Okay. We have to understand the impact of COVID. We have to understand the impact of quarantine and stress and working and teaching. And I mean, the, the craziness of the whole experience. Yes. yes. And I think because of that, we're seeing an increase in heart disease in women less than 55 years old. Yeah. This is a wake up call. This is just a wake up call, everyone. This is the time you ask your family about family history. This is the time you get all of those things checked. 
This is the time that you become educated, you become empowered, and this is the moment you start advocating for yourself to get all the tests you need and to know how to live your life, the rest of your life, from a heart-healthy perspective. Heart care is the new self-care, and that's really what this is about. 80% of the time is preventable. There, It's all in your control. And, and I think that this mission of mine needs to become the mission of everyone's. Um, I think when women do come together, they can change the world. And we've seen it. We've seen it over and over. And I, I'm hoping that this is the beginning of that. Beautiful. Thank you so much from my heart to yours, truly. Like, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you for the work you're doing in the world and everything you shared today. I mean, as Dr. Simon said, share this. Today, this interview, this is one you need to share. If you didn't even know that it is the number one risk factor for women, share it with four women and tell them to share it with four women. I love that as like a call to action. And for all of the show notes today, you can head over to thegoodlifecoach.com. All of the links will be there, but please share them for us again. So you've got Instagram. Yes. Adessa.health is our platform. Yes. Not launched yet, but check it out in a couple of weeks. Yes. And on Instagram, my Adesso. And um, myself, Dr. Suzanne Steinbaum.com. And I'm Dr. Steinbaum on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn, I think, and <laughs> all the things. Um, but we are we are really going to say this loudly and broadly and as often as we can that heart care is the new self-care. And all of us, all of us need to start getting engaged. Absolutely. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. And I can't wait to share this. It will be out, I think, when you're launching. So this is going to align beautifully and everyone definitely check it out. And if somebody wanted to work with you, is it through Adesso now or do you still do your private practice? I do I do have my private practice. Um, it's it's part-time. I am still seeing patients. Uh, Dr. Steinbaum, Dr. Suzanne Steinbaum.com. You can find me through there. Yes. And, People are um, going to want to. That's why I'm asking. But start with a de- it sounds like Adesso is going to be where everything's heading anyway. Um it's uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that with being a cardiologist, it's part of what I love, what I do, I I adore my patients and I love, I love helping people get well. And I will do that um, part-time for as long as I can. And the process um launching my brain out to the world through my Adesso and the Adesso platform. Thank you. Thank you for making what you know accessible to to everyone. Is it international? We're we're headed in that direction. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll be we'll be following you. Thank you so much, and everyone, do share this interview today. And thank you so much, Dr. Seinbaum, for your time. It's thank been you. such an honor, truly. So nice to talk to you, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you gained some new information or inspiration for your life. That is that the essence of this show is to really wake up to what's possible for you to reclaim your beautiful voice and to really learn to love and prioritize yourself. So if you gained any value from any of the conversations you've tuned into, make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. You can do that right now on your phone. And please do consider leaving a rating and review if you have yet to do so on Apple Podcasts. It's actually how more women can find the show. And I really want to grow a community of women who are loving themselves and living full on. So thank you as always for tuning in. And I look forward to reconnecting with you next Wednesday. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.